Does this sound sour to you? Or this sweet? You might think that I have finally gone insane here in my cellar and you might have a point. However, science also suggests that music has a taste. On top of that, it suggests that wine tastes different depending on the music you're listening to. So let's find out whether that's actually true. Fans of both fields have often associated wine with music and there are many references to wine in music lyrics from Bob Dylan to Jay-Z. We also know that music has an impact on our psyche. Slow classical music can calm us down while rap music can pump us up. But did you know that music also influences your wine buying decisions? For a study over the course of two months, two different kinds of music were played in the background of a wine store either classical music or the top 40 playlist of that time. The study concluded that more money was spent with classical background music as buyers were more likely to grab an expensive bottle with Mozart playing in the background. That sounds like a pretty easy way to increase turnover if you own a wine shop or wine bar. Furthermore, a different study examined the effects of genre music on your choice of wine. French and German wine were presented in a wine store, while typical music from those two countries was played in the background. French wine outsold German wine when French music was played in the background, and German wine outsold French wine when German music was played in the background, both times by a factor of three. Yet only one in six shoppers realized that the music might have influenced their decisions. But what I'm really interested in is how music changes our taste. First of all, there seems to be a very strong connection between music and our sense of taste. In an experiment conducted in 2011, musicians were asked to improvise on the basis of the four tastes, sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. Never heard of umami? Well, anyways, what came out of that experiment was very interesting though. The bitter music generally was low pitched with no interruption between notes. Salty was more of a staccato, so sharply interrupted notes following each other. Sour was high-pitched and dissonant, while sweet was slow and soft. When people who weren't musicians were asked to match the different music pieces to the different taste sensations, they were generally able to do so, which suggests that there is a generally understood link between music and taste. In another example, at a classical concert, both New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc and an Argentinian Malbec were served, and the audience reported that they tasted more acidic when Debussy's Jardin sur la pluie was playing, whereas when Rachmaninoff's Vocalise, 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 I think it is, was playing, they tasted more fruity. Today I'm going to conduct my own study. But before I start the tasting, <clears throat> Sorry, but before I start the tasting, let me first thank the sponsor of this video, headphones.com. I enjoy great music just like I enjoy great wine, even though I know far less about music. What I know though is that the right headphone can enhance the sound of your favorite artist, just like the right glass can bring out the best out of your wine. When looking at headphones.com selection, you can easily see that they're committed to excellent audio, as well as to giving people a great experience as confirmed by their five out of five star rating on Trustpilot. They try out their gear and only carry products that they really believe in and they're one of the few places where you can get the new Focal Babies wireless noise cancelling hi-fi headphones. I've used these babies a lot over the last few days and they combine great sound with a comfortable fit and I don't even hear myself slurping when I turn on the noise cancellation. So check out their online shop. There's a supportive community, great customer service, a 365 return policy. And on top of that, they watch this channel. Hi guys. So head over to headphones.com using the link in the description and tell them I sent you. So let's get into the wines. Just like in the study before, I prepared a New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc and a Malbec from Argentina. And I'm going to taste them while listening to classical music pop music and death metal to see what happens. Let's go. So first of all, I'm just going to taste the wine without listening to anything. The Marlboro Sauvignon Blanc is intense and very typical. There are notes of grapefruit, lemon zest. There's also flavor of gooseberries coming through, grassy notes in the background. And on the palate, it's quite fresh and lively with high acidity. This Malbec from Mendoza is intense also. And there's quite a lot of dark fruit character, blackberries, a little bit of cherry flavor as well. And there's a bit of spice notes coming through. On the palate, it's intense, ripe. There's quite a lot of alcohol and body there. The tannins are ripe 
and grippy and it's overall quite concentrated. Interesting. I would say that the classical music actually made the wine taste a little bit softer. So there was less grassiness there, less acidity. I mean, it wasn't completely different, but there was a difference. Okay, this was... Well, I'm beginning to think that it might just... Well interrupt my thought process but the wine tasted a little less intense i would say maybe a little more acidic let's try death metal now oh my god that was kind of terrible um the wine tasted rounder though i don't really know well i mean Wine tastes different every time you take another sip anyways, so it's kind of difficult to separate all that out. But, well, maybe in the comparison we'll see whether there are actually similarities between my reaction to the white and the red listening to the same music. So let's try again. Well, this is my favorite song out of the three, even though it's not great either, but the other ones are pretty terrible. Interesting. This tasted softer and rounder. Maybe it was just the soothing music, but it just felt rounder as a whole. I've been trying to bend the rules since I barely was walking. I've been trying out a well, I hate this kind of music. For me, the wine tasted more acidic with that shrill pop music playing in the background. So let's try death metal now. I need a red Interesting. Again, this wine tasted a little bit softer and rounder while this really wild death metal music was playing in the background. Hmm. I don't really know whether this little taste test produced any real results, but it indicates to me that there might be more to this whole music and wine thing. The wines actually tasted slightly different depending on the music I was listening to, but I don't quite know yet what influences that and how it actually pushes my taste palette in one or the other direction. But it also makes me think whether wine critics and myself are actually more influenced by their environment as they like to believe. I do think there is an impact and as a professional, you should know about that in order to stay as objective as possible. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is, what do you think? Does music impact your taste? Let me know down below. I hope I see you guys again very soon. Until then, stay thirsty.